two days before a crucial trade meeting between U.S. President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping, the Director General of the World Trade Organization said the global economy is facing its biggest trade disruption in 80 years. Despite trade tensions, the resilience of the global economy means there is still reason to be less pessimistic. Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwiala was speaking to a rice correspondent, Bimbai Mutin Hirik Bayong, in Riyadh at the Future Investment Initiative. We started the year with a lot of doom and gloom. You are absolutely, the way you characterize it is so good. Um, because the reciprocal tariffs came out and uh, it made everybody, took everybody by surprise. Um, what we are finding is, yes, the world trading system has been disrupted. The greatest disruption in eight decades, in 80 years. But the system is proving surprisingly resilient. I think that's a surprise even to me. When they did the analysis, because we have a methodology to analyze how much of world trade is actually going on on WTO terms. Prior to the tariffs, it wasn't 100%, it was 80%. After the tariffs, the number has gone down to 72%. So the tariffs have definitely had an impact. Mm -hmm. But I think this system was built block by block mm -hmm. over 80 years, and it's not that easy to dismantle. Mm -hmm. So the first piece of news I have is one of resilience. And I think that's what's giving people a little bit more of, I wouldn't say we should be, you know, a more, less pessimistic mm -hmm. uh, nature. Africa's richest man and the president and chief executive of Dangote Industries Limited, Aliko Dangote, said the energy transition in Africa is still 15 to 20 years away. He questioned the ability of electric vehicles to scale on a continent that still has an unreliable power supply. He spoke to a rice correspondent, Georgina Undukweze Yanka, at the Future Investment Summit in Riyadh. I believe in... Yeah. Uh... In energy, I don't really believe too much in energy transition. It will happen. Okay. But for us in Africa, really, you know, I mean, are you saying that we should go and have electric vehicles right now when we have 600 million, I mean, 600 million people that they don't have power, they don't yes. have electricity. So, you know, we have a long way to go. And what people are forgetting when it comes to oil is that oil, from oil, you produce 6,800. It's so over 6,800 items. So when you produce that, you know, it means that, yes, oil, you cannot get rid of oil. It's not just about fueling your vehicles. It's about doing this. This thing that I'm wearing is actually from oil. It's not from cotton. You know, the same thing that applies to you. When you look at most vehicles, you see that 35% of those vehicles, okay, they are all from oil, which is plastic. So... We have a long way to go. The transition will happen, but it's not going to happen in the next 15, 20 years. Uh... In other news, robots have been making headlines from New York to Riyadh. Ahead of Halloween in Times Square, New York City, Tesla's Optimus robot distributed Halloween candy to people. Tesla's humanoid robot Optimus made its East Coast public appearance in the city that never sleeps, where it posed for photos and interacted with crowds while connected to a power cord. The event also featured displays of the Tesla Cybercab Robotaxi and a Cybertruck billboard. In Riyadh, at the Future Investment Summit, a humanoid robot from Chinese firm Unitree Robotics was part of the performance as the opening ceremony, in line with the theme of the ninth edition, which is the key to prosperity, unlocking new frontiers of growth. The humanoid robot carried a key on stage and handed it to the performing artist. Uh, later in the day, Unitree Robotics put on a display of its humanoid robot's physical capabilities. At its booth at the King Abdulaziz International Conference Center, where the Future Investment Initiative is taking place, onlookers were treated to a robot wearing boxing headgear, boxing gloves, and sneakers. The robots showcased dancing moves and threw punches and kicks. Unitree says the robots are currently on sale globally and retail for between $6,000 and $100,000, depending on the model and complexity of its reasoning capabilities. Unitree Robotics Senior Sales Manager Lin Wang spoke to a RISE business correspondent, Rotus Odiri. 
actually we already sell globally uh, most of the country where we already sell and we produce it in large quantities um, we have quadruped robots and human robots okay and for human robots maybe we already sell thousands yeah and uh, the price is different we have different versions so price from uh, I talk about every every China price price from 6k US dollar to 100k US dollar so different size different motors very different price yeah yeah actually we release new versions almost every year for now we have human robots and quarter body robots every robot has three size small size middle size and bigger size uh, in this year we released new models of a small human robot R1 a big human robot H2 and the middle quadruple robot A2 so we released new models every year it will be very fast. I think we are the you know, top in this industry. Yeah. The full interview alongside the earlier ones done by Vimbai and Georgina are up on our YouTube channel so you can catch the full excerpt of the interviews. However, right now, a rise business correspondent, Rotus Odiri, joins us from Riyadh. Good morning, Rotus, and great to see you. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Rafai. Good morning, Dr. Abate and all our viewers out there. Excellent. Yes, I'm yes, sure you're yes. having a ball, especially with all the technology and AI news. But let's talk about, uh, you know, the technology news over the last 24 hours. There's been a lot of it. Can you quickly give us updates on NVIDIA, Apple and Nokia? Yes, I oh my goodness. Uh, Nvidia is almost a five trillion, a five trillion market cap. I mean, it's a four point eight, well four point nine, um, it, because of a deal that they struck. Oh, look, the Jensen Huang had their, their conference um, yesterday, and they announced a number of things. So the stock grew about five percent, and so it's now at, at about almost five trillion. So one of those deals was with Nokia. They're going to take a two point nine percent stake in Nokia, worth about a billion dollars. They're also going to work with no Nokia's um, RAN. I think it's radio, uh, radio. Uh, active network or something with respect to radio infrastructure to push out um, um, data centers and so on. So they're trying to get into telecoms. Uh, and then Apple also joined the $4 trillion club along with Microsoft and, and NVIDIA based on optimism on hardware sales for the iPhone. Uh, and then we've got earnings coming out later today. Three members of the um, Magnificent uh, Seven. So you've got Alphabet, you've got Microsoft, uh, and you've got, who is the third one? There's a third company that's gonna be releasing earnings later on this afternoon, or later on this day after the bell. Uh, so we're gonna be getting those uh, uh, in, um, after the bell closes. And so it's a lot of, it's a lot with respect to what's going on with technology. I'm too excited, so I forgot the third company. <laughs> oh, it's on the screen. <laughs> All right. So uh, how could the Federal Reserve interest rate decision later today impact the tech excitement? Yeah, Rufai, the, the um, Federal Reserve is flying blind right now. We, got, uh, we just got CPI data that was late, I think from September, in, uh, inflation going to 3%. Um, there's been no... Um, no labor market data uh, and everyone is going to be waiting to hear what Jerome Powell has to say about the labor markets and also about the inflation. There's been a lot, they've actually, with all, even with all this tech news, Amazon and a number of other companies have been announcing layoffs. So there, there are layoffs that are happening. The U.S. labor market is weakening. And if Powell comes out to say that we have anything close to a tech bubble, um, that could actually, you could actually see shares fall. I mean, yesterday, S&P was almost at 6,900, but it cooled down a bit. The Nasdaq, uh, Dow Jones, all of them reaching, you know, new record highs. So everyone is going to be listening. Even here in Riyadh, they've been talking about it, uh, about what Powell is likely to say about where the U.S. market, um, labor market is going in particular. So if he's pessimistic, then you're going to see shares fall. But we'll see what happens. Okay, but it looks like uh, the market is, uh, you know, uh, uh, assuming 100% probability that there will be a cut, uh, either now at this uh, meeting, October meeting, and also later in December. But we'll see how it plays out. But we understand there are multiple panel sessions today in Riyadh on artificial intelligence. We've seen robots uh, dancing and punching and uh, going up and down. Uh, I don't know when those robots will get to Nigeria. But what's on the menu today? <laughs> it, 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 oh, yeah, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Martin, yeah, so, no, it's a lot. I mean, I don't even know. 
if I can keep up. I'm speaking to, let me start with Nigeria. There's, um, his name is uh, Dr. Kingsley Undo. Uh, he works at a company called Hurain AI, and they're working on using artificial intelligence to further cancer research. So he's on a panel. Uh, he said he stopped by, said he watches right. He said to say hi to you, Ayo, Dr. Uh, uh, and Rufai. Uh, says he's a big fan, and so he wanted to you know, hopefully get an interview with him later on to talk about that. But yeah, there's so many. I mean, the robots we just talked about, there's a panel on what happens if robots reach higher intelligence and think for themselves. There's a panel on um, um, in energy um, with respect to the amount of energy that AI is going to require. Can, can we meet up? You heard Aliko Dangote saying you don't even have electricity for electric vehicles. And so um, there's an, uh, a panel on uh, health care. There's uh, Ruth Porat is here, the chief investment officer of Google. Um, also Sarah Fryer, the chief financial officer for uh, in uh, OpenAI. So there's a lot of, of panels um, going on. And so I, you know, I'll see how many I can attend. But I, I do feel like a kid in a candy store on this particular day. Yeah, well, bring thank bring you very back much. your robots for us, Rutus. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Rutus. I'm pomegranate juice. If I can afford I, the 6,000, I'll bring it. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what juice. to recommend to you to enjoy in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, just focus on the job. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>